and welcome back everyone to the OPL semi-final number two. We can see the dials here. Backs against the wall now, Rusty, for this series. This is they're down 2-0 to a legacy who look completely on form. Definitely. Legacy are looking so strong right now. It's going to be very hard for Direwolves into this third game to take it to them. They are an emotional side, Direwolves. They need King to continu continue to perform. Perfection, he has been doing well, but they just haven't been able to put it together as a team. Whereas you look at Legacy, they are a team. They're not individual players. That's exactly what they've been doing. Yeah, we kind of heard it from you and Spawn there at the end of that game number two. It's just the Dials can certainly hang here with Legacy. No question as far as players oh, yeah. go. But strategically, it just seems so difficult for this team. They had the Twist of Fate comp, got completely ran around by Carbon's Rek'Sai once again. I don't know what specifically has to change here for Dials, but something has to give here, like... I don't know, like, like throw, th throw three <laughs> mid lane bands or something. Like, do yeah. something drastic if you have to. Pull out the crazy picks that you've been saving maybe for the final once you get there because Dialves now have nothing left to lose. And that might be where they're most dangerous. And maybe they want to stop flexing the Cogmore and putting it yeah. back mid lane. Perhaps it's something that's worth considering is that Dialves, they need to change something coming into this game. That is black and white. That is what needs to happen. But what are they going to change is the big question mark because there are a lot of factors. I think on the macro and micro levels, Legacy, and it'll sound a little bit contentious, are outclassing Dialves, or they have been in these last two games. I completely agree. It's just, again, strategically, Legacy just have better shot calling, have better team play, have better movement. You know, level one, we saw Standard Lens. That favored Legacy. Game two, we saw Lens swap. That favored Legacy. So, don't know what Dialves have left. Don't have many other ways you can swap around the teams but we'll see what happens here in the draft here Dialve's going to go back to basics keep the bands the same for there both teams go. and there's the Ezreal ban so Ryze and Alstar will join Ezreal there Claire will not get that champion again and Rumble Callista there for Legacy what do they ban here don't ban an AD carry that's my only recommendation I don't think there's really a need for them to target ban besides the Azir which is something yep. that does need to be considered Direwolves are the first pick Azir has been banned from them in the last two games we haven't seen much success we saw a very strong Jace we didn't find success we saw a strong TF didn't find it either and there's Azir gonna get banned important to note it's a big Claire champion as well but Direwolves do it up here on the blue side. Pick away the Sivir for King, but most importantly, keep it away from Tallywacker. Yeah, nice adaption from the Direwolves. They did need to ban the Ezreal out of necessity. They banned <laughs> the Sivir in the first game. So smartly, they pick that one up. They put it onto King. King has got a very high success rate on that Sivir also. So he's a very comfortable Sivir player. And again, I think it's nice that King going to go back to something a bit more mid-game focused, a bit more early game play to it. Can be more aggressive, unlike the Cogman, where you do have to scale a bit more. Yeah. So... A good change so far from Dials. We did expect them to change at least a few things here. But Legacy is coming. Having a bit of fun hovering the jungle swain for now. But understandably, going straight back to Thresh Rek'Sai. Yes, yeah, something that I was going to consider maybe Dials wanted to first pick the Rek'Sai instead of perhaps the Ziva. Get it away from Carbon. He's been having a very strong early game impact here. Something that does need to be considered. But he's got it again. Minky Whale's picked up the Thresh for Flying Jew. And that is going to do wonders for them. Thresh seemingly a point of contention between the teams. And again, Dial's drafting here. We sort of mentioned it at the start of Game 1, I think, but the Rise Alistar bands are a little weird just because they feel like very Dial's champions. They do feel like Dial's champions, but what they've got right now is still going to work. The fact yep. that they get the Sivir unlocks what has been their team comps in the past. Something that they've gone for the Cogmore for doesn't necessarily make sense. They've still got the comps that they're looking for. They don't have the Alistar. They've got a Nautilus, though. Yeah. They have a tank in the top lane, and now they've got a go button. Yeah, and all of a sudden, this looks very Direwolves. Yeah. Get to 20 minutes, pop you on the hunt, and just rush into the back lines and take people out. Nautilus, Maokai, their next two picks to joining with that Sivir. A very nice start to the draft here for Dialers, but what do Legacy want to respond with? So they could very easily go for their AD carry. There's no reason not to at this stage. They're probably going to last pick mid. Use that as the counter. Let Claire pick whatever he would like into perfection because he does need to show his hand in the next rotation. So you go for maybe the top lane, you go for the AD carry here. They could look towards the Nar again. That's something that Minky did have success on in that last game. And then they could go for the Corky, definitely worth mentioning. Ooh, Tally might switch it up here. You can see Claire sort of looking at his teammates saying, what are you picking? <laughs> you, need to, you need to make sure you Let have it down pat. And it is going to be Shen Corky. Yeah, so they've changed it and they've got this gen in the top lane, something that can match any kind of split pushing, if not bested in its entirety. The Minky Whale special, of course, the one getting Banner of Command to be an actual item in League of Legends, yep. is Minky Whale on this gen. So a very smart pickup here. Tallywacker 
on a champion who's found a lot of success on the last two games. As a small note, uh, Banner Command's pretty good against Maokai. Yep. <laughs> it was originally uh, against Ryze, I believe, was what Minkyo brought it into. But uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes, Minky. Already made Chen a little bit famous, it feels like, here in the OPL. But I like that Tally's uncorking in, despite the fact that this matchup might not be that crash hot. It's not the greatest direct matchup, of course, being into the Civ. Very easy to spell shield. And the 2v2 threat is always going to be in favor of Direwolves. Not by a massive amount. Nautilus can still take an abundance of damage in a trade. It's just that the Civ is always going to be able to hurt you. Always going to be able to push you out of the lane. And Corky is a champion that, as Spawn mentioned earlier, you look to kill champions with. You want to be in the champion matchup. You want to have the 2v2. Yeah, Dials finished their lineup. Oriana actually for perfection. I don't believe he has a single game on that this regular split, but still we're going to go back to Gragas here. And I look down the Dials and I see just a very safe, very standard, but a good team fighting comp. Standard is definitely the way to describe what the Direwolves have right now. The fact they've gone for that Oriana speaks volumes as to how they're feeling in terms of their drafting. Banning Ezreal away, a bit of a necessity that has been forced upon them. And then they go back to what is a safe option in the mid lane. There's no real Wombo. They've actually got the anti-Wombo of having the Gragas available, but Oriana very good at working around zone controls and aggressive placements if need be. They can protect King there as well, but you can see Carbon claps his hands together, trying to uh, psych up his team as Cassiopeia is the last pick there for Claire. That's what he wanted into Oriana. One of the Claire specials is this Cassiopeia. He's found a lot of success in the Challenger series in Os for that Cassio in the mid lane. This is one of his champions where he wants to kill. And you can see that by his summoner spells. Yep, pastry. has Ignite. Ready to kill perfection. Who's going heal? Realizing that Claire probably wants to kill him, which is not where he wants to be. But Legacy picked another strong comp. The core seems to be the same here. Get Carbon Flying doing a nice duo that they can make plays with. Get Tallywacker on his nice, consistent uh, Corky. And let Minky and Claire do whatever they want. Yeah, I think Die Wolves have the comp to actually hit 20 minutes this yep. game and not find themselves losing a Baron and then ultimately the game two minutes later. They've got the team comp. They've got the makings of a very good late game wombo base team fight. They've got the AoE, the tank front line. There is a fair bit of magic damage there though. So Sivar does need to step up in this game. Can't be behind. No, and King we've seen when he's ahead, very aggressive, very far forward, really good AD carry. And something like Siva, he can hard carry a game or just by running at people when he's ahead. Gets behind though, and that's what Dials. Ha that's what happened to Dials in game number one. And we're going to have Struggle Street no matter what happens here. The Direwolves, nothing left to lose. They can only play to win here from this point onwards. But get on Twitter and let us know who you think is going to win the game. Will Direwolves bring it back and force a fourth game? Get, use DW in for that one. Or is it the hashtag LGC win and Legacy? They get a 3-0 sweep and their date with the Chiefs in the final. He does have a fantastic Ariana skin, though yes. the perfection. Oh, if there's excellent. anything to note, might be a tipping factor into this game's outcome. I do like that skin. Yeah, please make sure to include skin considerations <laughs> in your uh, Twitter. Tweet skin win for the team that you're cheering for. Maybe use the hashtag skin win there as well <laughs> for a bit of extra. But this could be our last game of the night, Rusty. Die Wolves going to move out of their base on the blue side for possibly the last time this evening if they want to meet the Chiefs in the final for the rematch of the split one grand finals. It all starts here. It's been an uphill climb so far, but the Dials sitting at the base of the mountain looking up wondering, can we do this? No doubt the nerves are starting to mount from both teams in this particular game because it is starting to come onto the line. Every respective game from here, whether this is the last or whether it isn't, becomes a lot more intense. Is this the first game Carbon's used the skin for Rexo? I think, I think so. it is. That's interesting. I wonder if he's feeling a bit more comfortable. Because that's a be. fun skin. It's Full Body Rexo is. is a fun skin. It is. It says he wants to have fun. And well. that's exactly what he seems to be wanting to do. But he can't really do that when all of the direwolves are sitting in your jungle denying any fun. And again, nice vision being put down by both players. Almost have mirrored wards here. Looking for that deep vision there towards the lanes. But right now, Carmen going to waddle over to his grunt, probably starting there. And Sybil, by the looks of things, wants to start on Carmen's red buff. He does. An aggressive decision, but Legacy have the wards at least on the respective red buff. If they start... Carbon's red, which he actually changed his mind. Yeah, I think I would too. I mean, we're expecting a vertical no. jungle given the placement, but King and Nada are actually hanging around mid lane. They're really <laughs> holding on for this lane swap here. Nada's still enjoying himself. That's what I like to see as I, he's dancing around. I King. mean, you talked about Shuffer kind of before, at the end of game two being really yeah. that big shot call and presence for the team. If Nada is anything, despite being a new member for his team, he is a just a beautiful force of happiness for any team. He is always telling. His teammates, how much he loves them, how it's all going to be okay. 
But no one's going to keep them together in a pretty tired time. It is going to be Nardo. And what a perfect matchup for King. But you're right, they have gone for that lane swap <laughs> again. Something that Siva is very good at. She does excel at taking down turrets. It's going to be great for them in terms of how a Siva Nautilus can go. Especially because Nada can be unlocked on that Nautilus. Something we mentioned in the first game is how when the Nautilus doesn't need to be in lane the entire time. He has a hook, can go everywhere else, similar to what Flying Jew is right now. I was about to say, we saw this happen last game and it was perfection that suffered for it here. And once again, it's gonna happen. Nada's actually here as oh. well. They might bait him in here. He's gonna get the damage down. Nada, not gonna throw the hook. Must have Riptide skilled at oh, level no, one. Hook down now for Nada, trying to maybe bait them. Claire level two. But perfection will zone them away. A weird 2v2. Perfection needs some damage. So Flying Jew being level 2 is the important part of this right there. Is he's evidently taken experience in the jungle to get himself that level advantage. Nada, as you said, has that Riptide. Doesn't have a hook to actually have a direct impact. Going in again! Flash forcing the flash there from Perfection. Rough. Four people in his lane at three minutes. Rough. Rough indeed. But that does give King free time. If King's going to have a game here, it's going to be this one on Sivir. <laughs> so Die Wolves have invaded the jungle of Legacy. They're taking the red buff, so we're seeing a vertical jungle start here. The exception is that they're putting a lot of effort into ensuring that Perfection has a really, really bad time. And that is exactly what they're doing to him right now. Four people focusing around the mid area, making sure the vision is also around that area. They're still here! It doesn't end. Perfection doesn't have a flash. He's only got that heal. Teleport down, that's really smart. But I don't know if it's enough to save Perfection. Sharp gonna come in. Minky will taunt him, but he'll take tower aggro. Legacy again! The Sybil comes around, gonna get knocked up there by Carbon. But they're looking for a fight. It's 3v4 clear. That is a lot of damage, but the Dials get out safely <laughs> one more time. At the very least, they didn't get a successful dive off. Nobody going down as the end result, but Minky Whale looking to be a little bit aggressive hitting the taunt to ensure the turret was hitting him and not anybody else. King gets the turret though. Yep, and uh, Carbon's going to take the red buff. But, but this that's the response. Might open more space for Sharp, and I don't know if Legacy can finish this turret. Although with Carbon in the bottom half, might make sure they get it. So keeping in mind, of course, that Sybil was the one taking Carbon's red buff first. This is the natural yep. progression of how the jungling was going to go, with an added little bit of dive in the mid lane in between for some particular reason. Just a bit. Oh, it's going again. Yep. Carbon goes back into the mid lane, gonna try and take up Perfection. It's low on mana, but he'll dodge it again. This time he used the heal. <laughs> yeah. Having a really bad time in this mid lane. There have been better situations for him. Claire on Cassiopeia of all champions. Yeah. Is being gifted a free lane. I was gonna say this matchup's not even that good for Oriana. It's not. So it's perfection now. doing well, you have much worse now. Claire's like, ooh, I have a summoner advantage. Perfection's like, really? <laughs> has more than that, that's for sure. He's just been gifted this lane as we mentioned, of course. Perfection, the fact he's still here is speaking wonders for how he has gone in laning phase. He's still about 10 plus CS behind yep. at this stage, so not in a fantastic position by any means. The good thing about Orianna though, as a champion, is that she's always going to be relevant because she has the shockwave. Something that can be team fight changing, can be game changing if it connects. Ooh, Flying Jew's been caught now by Nada and Sybil. Good double play, but the body slam will follow Dredge Lane there to lock him up for a little bit longer. And Flying Jew looking to go down here. First blood has not happened yet. And they will go oh. in for a good double play, but Sybil claims the first kill. Flying Jew doing his best attempt at living there, but it's almost predictable at this stage. The Dire Wolves can just group around mid and expect to find members of Legacy. Yep, and King even moved up in there as well. Wanted an assist, I think. Didn't yeah, get he was one. Close. But he's got a pickaxe. He'll return to the bottom lane. Gonna start shoving out that instead as Carbon. Back again for a fifth visit of perfection. Oh, dodges the flash. Carbon tries to outplay him. Perfection gonna keep running, but he's got no mana. Gets knocked up. Claire will kill him. <laughs> and a well-deserved kill for Cassiopeia. It's a well-deserved kill. Let's just put it that way. They burned a single summoner spell every time that they came here. Carbon using his flash, but not connecting. Still forcing the Oriana into a very awkward position and they do get the kill eventually. Claire is big. They're ensuring that he can carry this game, and that is exactly what they're now banking on, the amount of effort they put into that. Well, that does open up room for King and Sharp, in particular King, having a nice start to this lane, getting a bit more aggressive. Now you can see the support's fairly under-leveled as King. Who's gonna go in and not as forcing them away? Sybil's here as well. Good hook on the Flying Jew. He doesn't have summoners, I don't teleport. think, with the teleport. Gonna get forced down by Minky. Hook lands on Tanada. 
Doesn't take enough. That got cancelled by Sharp. Yeah, Sharp actually flashed yep. to ensure that that got cancelled right there. So Minky not able to get to the bottom lane is now stuck sitting in the top lane. But it's not like Sharp's having a great time either. He just ensured that there was no teleport. Sharps will be up pretty soon as well. Yeah, started with the lead though, did Mark. I'm going to hold on to that for a little while longer. And Sybil's back down in the bottom lane. Dials know that they've been gank ganking that mid lane. They need to try and get ahead somewhere else. And I like that Sybil's looking to this bottom lane. Yeah, you always look to the, the guy that you know is going to be able to carry if he finds a lead. Ensuring that King is at the very least not behind is a big factor for the Oh, my oh God. Perfection gets knocked up again! Claire with the ult, he's got enough damage to finish him off. Perfection dies one more time. He is two levels behind Claire. I feel frustrated for Perfection at this stage. Like, he, he had his flash available, so he probably could have lived there, but he didn't use it. Claire is just... They've set up a tent in the mid lane. Yep, uh, it's more than that at this stage. <laughs> it's a tent convention. Well, yeah, we... <laughs> a tent convention. That'll have to do with Claire. Also steals his blue buff just to add insult to injury. It's a campsite. It That's is a, a campsite. I don't, I don't know, I'm out of analogies. It's that a was... national park. <laughs> <laughs> Paid the range of their fee. It's been a nice scenic view walking past the mid lane. And they certainly got their money back in they terms They have of indeed. Protection not having a good time. Carbon now in the top lane. Gonna look somewhere else for a gank. Sharp pops his ult. He's gonna try and live. Good double knockback. Will keep himself safe. It's unbelievable to consider that Carbon can go mid this many times and still get a successful gank off. Blowing a single summoner, finding a kill now twice. Perfection finally level six. Has his summoners. He's going to be okay, but Claire has the opposition's blue buff right now. Has a 20 CS lead. Has a 20 CS lead. Has his tier stacking has boots as well, so he's still quite fast and is just in the most comfortable position in the world. So, Direwolves are struggling. They're going to have to bread bridge perfection to ensure that he's still relevant as the game starts to ramp later and later. But he's still going to be relevant at the very least. One of the saving graces of Orianna as a champion is that she's still using it. Yeah, has that Charles Azotis perfection, so a little bit more magic resist against the very aggressive playing Claire. But I feel like Legacy are just taking advantage of what they've seen in games one and two because they knew that they couldn't hang strategically with all the movement that was happening. So I think Legacy must be convinced that if we just overgank this lane, Dials can't respond appropriately. And that's honestly what we've seen apart from Flying G getting killed. Yeah, I mean, it's a gank until it works strategy that is working. Yeah, oh, Nata though hooked up. Sybil's in the bottom side. King might just pop the ulti and go nuts. Does not commit. Sybil, oh, he's found it. Massive double ulti as Minky's going to join in. Now King uses his ult. He'll get the kill on the flying dude. Tallywhacker almost dead oh, as well. Wants it. They're going to chase it. Minky's down here. No, no, he got no. cancelled. Sorry, he was ulted. playing dude that died. Yeah, he ulted someone that died. So he oh, actually Claire get popped it. up. Ulti's good, gets the three-man stun. Not they're going to keep chasing perfection. Wants revenge, Tallywhacker coming He's in. Got it. Claire will die, Sybil gets the kill. The Direwolves get two kills and they're going to go straight to Dragon. And this is Direwolves again and again. All of this repeated aggression that has been coming down into the mid lane has just been completely answered and outdone from one successful gank in this bottom lane. Sybil going completely berserk right there, hitting a flash ultimate, using the body slam just to close distance to secure them with an explosive cast. The confidence coming out of Sybil right there is just unbelievable. No summoners available from Legacy's bot lane. They get caught out of position. And that is exactly what Direwolves were needing in this game. All of the attention that Carbon has been sacrificing into mid, a bit into the top lane, is now almost completely out the window. Yeah, and that's a dragon up and 2,000 gold and a turret lead for Direwolves, who finally get an early game that might suit them a bit more here as Minky going to keep pushing. Has the Barmy's Cinder will try and get some damage under this turret, but Sharp, Catalyst Double Dorrance feels nice and safe. And all of a sudden, momentum feels like it's in Direwolves' hands for once. It does, and even considering what has happened mid, the fact that Direwolves are in an advantage is speaking wonders. Something that we have mentioned multiple times now is that Orianna always going to be relevant. Well, we're seeing that right now. Picks up a kill, or at least the assists onto two of the kills there, onto the members of Legacy. Cassiopeia can always carry. Corky is still big. He has farm. Not really comparable to King, who's starting to scale at the moment. It's just that, I mean, Tally's effective items are all towards a big build, whereas King is going for a pickaxe into more of a gold income style of build. So he's still definitely scaling, ramping up. But because they are in a gold lead, they're in a power point now, Diables, in terms of map control. They're able to actually scale that lead through into something more meaningful. And we'll see if they can do just that here. Got the dragon. Things are looking good. 
But aggression still around that mid lane as I think Sybil and Carbon kind of waved hello to each other through the left side of the Dial of Jungle. But Perfection still 20 CS behind. Claire with a need to see large rod. Still very threatening. But things are going better in the other lanes, and even Perfection's not having the worst time now. So we'll see what happens. We're going to calm things down a little bit now, Rusty, because we don't have really a major objective to look at for about four minutes or so. Yeah, so there's nothing really. It's going to slow down a fair bit. Every outer turret, though, is still available for the Diables for Legacy to take. So if there's any plan of attack, if they want to put something into effect, definitely able and willing to do so. But I mean, we've been looking at Carbon for the past minute and a half. He literally hasn't left mid. -season. Yeah, <laughs> either that or it's in Bay Tile with Jungle. It's actually caught maybe. Nada does get the uh, passive down. Good Q away to the wall. Perfection going to try and save him. Nice ball place with Sybil. Accidentally knocks them back in. Nada will get taunted and killed. Minky Whale coming down for that one. Carbon flashing it, I believe, to get him knocked in. So very smart from Carbon to ensure that Shen was going to be in a nice position to secure the kill. And that's exactly what they get. Uh, King? Trying to He's take the recalling. turret. This is He's, classic he King. He cancelled his recall. Yep, doesn't want it. Pops he his ulti. It. He's going to run. Has to try and execute himself. The but teleport. Carbon's going to chase him in. Yeah, Minky will meet him there as well. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> oh, no, it didn't quite dodge it. Needed the spell shield. Didn't find it. We'll give the kill to Minky. Last hit the Oh, minions. wow, he's not dead. Oh. Spell shield secure. <laughs> Wasting a bit more time. <laughs> we'll finally die to Palmy Cinder in the tower. A lot of effort went into killing him. A lot of time was wasted. So if, the, if it's worth anything, it took, it took an awful long time to secure the fact that they were only getting one kill. It allows the rest of the dials to try and at least reset some waves, reset the map, get some vision down in important areas. No dragon to take. Only the outer turrets remaining. It's not too bad that he died, though. He didn't really need to die. Yeah, unfortunately, those kills were the lead that Dial sort of had in this game. So all of a sudden, Talarek is going to get this tower and legacy. They're going to be back in the gold lead. Only 300 up, to be fair. It's a slim lead, but you did not want to give momentum back to legacy. You know, legacy, seemingly one of the teams that when they find the lead, they're able to close it out. They are behind by what? 617 on average against the playoff teams right now. Yep. So they're remarkably behind most of the time when you have a look at how they're performing on average. Yet they've managed to find victories against these guys. And the fact that they're finally in this game, not ahead by that much, is a good sign for Direwolves. It's just difficult against Legacy, a team that want to take a late game, if you're not finding an even bigger lead. Yeah, it's scary. To think of Direwolves as the 20-minute team and maybe Legacy as the 30-minute team at a very plain level, it's a worry for the Wolves, but they've found two games now, and even this one to an extent, where they have been falling behind early. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they've got the team comp to do so as well. They're looking to essentially hit 30 minutes themselves for the Oriana's sake, and then 20 minutes for the Sivir. So it comes down to who's going to be that big man to step up for the Die Wolves in this game and really secure them a very good team fight. If King can go massive, then it may be the Die Wolves win condition around 20 minutes. Like they're used to. I think, honestly, it's Sharp right now that needs to make the difference. Sharp and Sybil, because Affection's still farming, and King is now behind by Trinity Force here to Talawaka. So these carries are not made equal. Nice spell shield, though, as the Harass comes back down onto Minky. But Nada, too far forward here, going to take a couple of hits there, Will Carbon. But they're just trying to get this turret here, and Legacy are holding onto it for dear life. Yeah, Carbon being here to try and prevent it going down is a signal that they're looking to slow down what Direwolves are trying to achieve because they've just made a trade in that top lane. Sybil's here. They're uh, just watching each other. I like that Sybil's being nice and quiet, not to activate from a sense, but Carbon spots him anyway. He actually gets the smite down for a slow knock up there. Minky will find the top. Good flash from Sybil. Keeps it safe, and the Dials do get a turret in the bottom lane. All five members of Legacy were nearing that river, hence the flash, which would have, what might have seemed a little bit over aggressive or unnecessary from Sybil because it was only the tank members. So he gets out with his life, but Legacy, they've just taken the top turret. They've just rotated from top to mid, and this turret should not be going down on us. This shot calling is so good from Legacy. Tallywhacker just gets another one, but the Dial is going to brute force it. Nada caught out trying to make a play, will go down, but now Perfection's been caught up by Flying Chew. Tallywhacker going to destroy him before the ulti procs. Sybil will tank it up. King's trying to get in there for some damage, but it's not quite enough. Tally gets a shutdown onto Sybil. Sharp will die as well. And that's a four for one team fight win for Legacy. The Dragon conveniently there at the right time also. Legacy just looking unstoppable right now. They rotate from top to mid. They get a team fight just below mid and then they get a Dragon. They are walking down the map, down the river and picking up everything on the way. Perfection not even able to find a shockwave in that fight as you keep eyes on where he is. Claire caught out by Sybil, but it's not enough to secure anything. 
He goes down. Shen's ultimate is there to make sure Claire stays alive long enough to secure a kill onto perfection, onto this Orianna. Sharp is left by himself, the only tank member. Die Wolves, they just seem to be a little bit in shambles. Perfection, when he's behind, he's forcing himself into weird positions. Yeah, I mean, Die Wolves feel pressure to fight, it feels like, in this series, but not even King was ready to fight there for that one. Now has his Infinity Edge, but did not have that earlier. And Talibaka's Trinity Force is not bad as far as items go. Perfection's still really far behind. He's about 20 CS down on Claire. He's going to pick up some more here. And it's just been the... Just the map movement from Legacy that's been most impressive this series. He's done well. Perfection has done well to secure the fact that the CS difference is always going to be this low, which, considering what had happened in that mid lane, the fact that it's still 20 is quite nice. But Perfection is 0 and 3 right now. He has 3 assists. Not able to find a single kill. And Sybil, he has been doing so well in this game. He has been trying to make things happen for his team. But they're lacking the damage right now, essentially. The Sybil not able to really do much. Only has basically just finished that Infinity Edge. And still needs to make it for the next Sharp's item. going to get caught out of his own walls here. His Flying Duke plays him back. Carbon's there as well. Perfection going to try and get him out. He'll actually flash to safety. Minky, aggressive teleport towards a minion. But Talibak is in the top lane. Legacy again. All over Die Wolves in this map. Yeah, you can see the decision making. They catch someone at the Wolves, the teleport was used mid, but they all know that they're going for this top lane turret. The decision making has been put into effect about 30 seconds in advance. A really impressive stuff from Legacy. Die Wolves have used an auto. Yeah, Ulti there onto Minky. They'll get Carbon with it. Ulti hits Flying Jew, but the cast knocked him out of it. Sybil now gonna get aggressed on Nardis in the back line, trying to fight. Sharp's going in onto Tally as well. They need a key kill, but they just can't find it. Sharp probably gonna die here. Will live for a little while longer, but Claire will take out Sybil running interference. And another 2-0 skirmish win for Legacy. Something that we talked about in the champion select is how the Orianna and the Gragas don't always work yep. together. That's exactly what we just saw in that fight as the Orianna tries to hit the shockwave onto everyone. The Gragas is just blown out in every direction ever that isn't where the shockwave is. So, unfortunate from Direwolves, they try to make something happen. It was the right idea to catch Legacy out of position. But Legacy are just seemingly so far ahead at 19 minutes in this game. They've got themselves a gold lead of this much already. It's so difficult for Direwolves, for their team comp, for them as players to actually come back. Yeah, just a team that relies a lot of momentum and right now have about zero yeah. in this particular game. And they can't afford to lose this one, so they're going to have to try and hold on. But the blue buff's going to go to Legacy as well. Perfection now going to get ganked again. Carbon just comes back down. He's got no mana. Oriana will barely live, but Minky No takes him out instead. Now going to keep going. Sybil and Nard are going to try and do something, but Sharp will die. Claire's doing too much damage. Minky will fall. Sybil will get the shutdown. But King doesn't have his ulti, they can't keep chasing. Dials have no damage, Claire's still looking, he has ult, he has ult. Ooh, wants it, wants King. Oh. No, nope. wants to go home safely. That's the Claire special right there, by the way. Sit in a bush oh. and hope someone comes Blind Jew's dead. No, nope, maybe not. Sybil gonna keep chasing, they're trying to give it to King, I think. Good smite down from Sybil, he they're doesn't really want to take it, but he kind of has to, yeah, he takes it. He's like, sorry <laughs> man, you don't have your ulti, I can't give this to you, or King maybe didn't want to use it. Mobility boots are a thing. It yes. needs to be considered. He was going to get away if Sybil did not actually hit him, and he was one hit from dying. So they do pick up a kill. It's really good. They actually find multiple kills for their troubles. Die Wolves, they get another fight that they're looking for. The gold lead has decreased by more, but King is like the ultimate and only damage source for the Die Wolves right now, and he's not able to get into these fights. They've got the front line of the Shen zoning everyone away. Yeah, Minky is massively tanky in this game. Spirit Wizard, Sunfire already completed. Carbon again on Tanada. Gonna get picked up in the jungle here. It is not safe for Die Wolves to be in around this blue buff. It's not safe for them to be somewhere where they just fought. So Nada looking to try and get some vision back or deny the vision that Legacy had already placed. They're putting a lot of emphasis around this Baron buff, so it needs to be considered. And they're trying to push their way into it, but they're putting themselves in places where they struggle to get vision. Oh, they're trying to catch Carbon here. They will knock him back. Ulti's good there from Gragas. That might be a pick. They need one. They get it. 
Nasir will gonna keep chasing. King's popped his ultimate perfection. Gonna go in, clears out of position. He's actually gonna die there to oh. King. Massive two-man shockwave. They'll grab Minky as well. Natali could be the next Titus perfection. Runs in there to try and take him out. They will get the kill. Minky will die as well. Dials needed something, but they get gifted a team fight. And Sybil again hitting those explosive shots exactly where they need to be. He's engaging for the team so well. They're looking to go for a Baron on the back of what was King putting down an abundance of damage. Exactly what his team was looking for. He was in that fight. Has his two items completed. Perfection has the blue buff and a needlessly large rod. They're going for Blind it. Mind you, if you can steal this for your team, Sybil actually pops out to make sure he's away. Rek'Sai can't get there in time, and the Baron buff goes to Dials as we flip the script. Now the Wolves are up a thousand gold. What can you even say? The fact that King has just been given kills on a silver platter here runs at Claire. There is nothing Claire can do. The ultimate not available. I believe it was even spell shielded by King there based off the cooldowns. Taliwaka caught by Sharp, the frontliner. This Maokai is worth noting. He is huge. Perfection picks up double buffs. They pick up three kills onto King. He's on a killing spree from one fight. They get a Baron. This is starting to look really good. Uh, King's almost got his ulti legacy. You cannot be at this dragon. They are going to finish it. They'll get it. Who's going to be the kill? Might just be Carbon. That's not a bad trade. He'll live. Oh, Ooh. barely gets through that tunnel. But ulti's away to safety. He <laughs> doesn't want anything to do with Direwolves. <laughs> he ulted directly through them all. So they saw him leaving and they're like, oh, damn. But back to the fountain. <laughs> They get the dragon for their troubles. No one actually dying from Legacy. The, the problem is now, they know the Rex is nowhere nearby. They pick up a turret for it, and it's gold. The yep. second dragon means nothing, essentially. It's the bridging dragon towards the fifth one. Dials are now able to find gold to find objectives that are worth more than that. And they might continue to push mid now. Yeah, can finally fight here. I mean, Minky's in the top lane. We'll threaten that inhibitor eventually, but one way for that minding wave to go here. And Minky right now, not going to port in, not going to use his ultimate. We'll let the couple towers fall because Legacy, without the Baron buff, probably know they have to give up a couple. Yeah, one Baron buff gives them 300 gold each. They then find two turrets, so it's 600 gold as a team, essentially. They're, they're in a very comfortable position here, Skywolves off the back of one smart play. And we call this team the 20 minute team so many times already. But it was about the 20 minute mark in this game where they decided to start winning. Yep, King had his two items, Sharp was good. Sybil's ult, I agree, have been on point this game. They're gonna take another one here. Minky might come in, but the top laners both have teleports. Legacy, you know, they have to keep giving stuff up, but the Dial's gold lead is only growing from here. And something that is so very scary that does need to be respected is King when he's ahead. Yes. He's found all of these kills, and by his positioning, you know that he's ahead. He knows that he is ahead, and he's making sure that every single person in this game respects that fact. And finally, as a result of King being ahead of Sharp and Civil fighting well, Perfection has finally gotten to two items at a respectable pace. And all of a sudden, that Orianna, that must have felt really useless in the first 10 minutes, is a team fight beast. Exactly. Orianna, something that we did mention, still going to be relevant. The rest of the team, Direwolf, Sybil in particular, as mentioned, can bridge that Orianna to relevance. And now, so very relevant, has rushed two of the damaged core items, only missing the Void stuff to have the Holy Trinity of Orianna AP items completed, is in a very comfortable position to really carry the rest of the team through. What was a shaky stuff? Yeah, very shaky, given all the attention. Blue buff there goes to perfection. I think that was his first one of the game. Second, if we count kills, that gives him yes. blues. First one who was certainly given from yeah. his own jungle, that's true. Level 13 now, looking much better. Bloodthirster almost finished up for King now as well. The Baron buff has worn off, I believe. Sybil, yep, has dropped the buff, so doesn't have that anymore. But the Dials know they've carved themselves a lead. Legacy were about 4,000 gold up just a moment ago. All of a sudden, it's Dials that look at about a 3,000 gold lead, so not much but enough to keep going from this point onwards and snowball the game into a win. This is where the Dials look most threatening, so what do they do next? They need to find more people. They have the Gragas to catch people out, is what they've been doing to put themselves in a position where they are now. They don't have any more outer turrets to take. They know that Minky Whale is going to be split pushing pretty much at all stages of this game. If they can kill someone before Minky can get into the fight, they will win the game. It is very difficult for them to do so, though, when Minky Whale has such a big shield. Yeah, and Dives are splitting off right now. King's going top lane. He's got three items completed. But he's going to push that wave out. They'll jump in, though. 
for the five right now. Sharp will port down, but King's not there. They will disengage Nada. Maybe gets out safely. Sharp, though, hooked up by Flying Dew in the back lines. Has to buy time for King. King has not popped his ulti. He's going to try and join the fight. Oh. But Mickey, flash three man top perfection. Has to peel them away. Gets the three man shockwave, but Flying Dew lands the hook to make it a 5v4. And King again. Split pushing in a lane. It's the farm greed, something that he did in the first game, which is essentially how they lost that. Immediately though, the decision making is just so concise from Legacy. They see King, they save fight, they have the Shen go on carbon, they just press that big go button. Siva tried to get there, but nowhere near in time to save the rest of the team. And Oriana does not have the impact that exclusively King is doing in this game right now. He picked up the triple kill. Oriana was picking one where she can, a bit of a cherry picking fight. Ori is snowballed, but not comparable to the Siva, who cannot leave the rest of the team if Legacy are grouped. Yeah, and Minky, just that pressure, forced the dives into another tricky decision. And then Carbon now going to go in and try and flank Civil. I think, as his ulti. No, going to flash out instead. Doesn't quite have it yet. Oh, Sharp taking them off, but Minky gets a sick three-man top perfection. Not joining in, but King is dishing out damage. Good disengage ulti there. Sharp will chase down Minky. And now it's the Direwolves that fight with a lead. Thankfully, the lantern there to save Claire, who was so out of position. Not a once. Yeah, going in. Righteous Glory is oh. there. Flash hook finds Carbon. Gonna lock him down. Perfection, though. Gonna ulti Carbon back in just on the edge. Able to get the kill. Now Direwolves fighting 5v3. So back and forth right now. Direwolves getting caught out of position. Legacy try and make it happen again. But the numbers were there. King was there to deal damage. And try as Minky might, he's hitting the taunts that he needs to. It's not giving them direct victories. He needs the damage to be there, but the damage is being zoned by Sharp. Yeah, and Sharp's a big presence in this game. He is huge on top of the Cassiopeia. All that magic resist there, Righteous Glory. Now a Spirit Vizard right on top and moving in for a frozen heart by the looks of things with those items there. Void stuff on the way for perfection. Lock it there for Sybil. And three items and counting now for King. The major buffs are respawning. Dragon in 10, Baron in 30. And this already close game is getting a whole lot closer, Rusty. You can feel the mentality starting to play on the mind of Legacy, though. They know if King's there that they have to be very hesitant to stop fight. He is ahead in items. He still has three completed items, so he's ahead of Paliwaka, who just hasn't really been able to make an impact in this map. Not yet, but Legacy. Make sure Minky takes the Dragon, knowing Baron's back up. That was potentially risky, but good timers and shot calling from Legacy. Look at their vision control pastry. That was so far from a risk because yeah. if they saw anyone getting near the pit, they would have came back. True. But all the vision controls on this side of the map belongs to Direwolves. That's right. And they're the ones that want the Baron. Sharp doesn't have his TP, by the way. So Minky all of a sudden turns into, from a nuisance to a big threat. Yeah, he's a problem. He is a massive problem. They can't send anybody to deal with him. So they're going to be looking to fight before he becomes too much of a threat. Well, they're going to try something. Might force onto the Baron. The Minky is gaining ground in the bottom lane. Dials are not... There's not a call being made from what I can tell. You'll know with the Righteous Glory from Nada whether they're looking to engage. The fact that the depth charge cannot be dodged ensures that someone's getting initiated. Well, they go in. Sybil finds Carbon again. King pops his ulti. They're going to go for it. Minky hasn't put it in yet. King's got the kill. He's on a rampage. Tallywhacker! Getting absolutely dropped is forced to flash away. And Minky comes in, but he's late. He is late, but he is at the very least here, of course, getting that ultimate off, ensuring that he's at the very least got an optic B here. It didn't get cancelled. They didn't kill him beforehand. So not too bad, Diwolves. Minky taunt. Oh. Finds Nada. Hook finds perfection. They're going to chase. They're trying to finish no, this Baron. Still doing it. Yeah, Carbon has his ulti as well. So if 10 seconds elapse, Diwolves can't even do this Baron. In fact, it'll hit the point where Legacy can. Well, Sharp diving finds Minky, though. Not really who they want. They Sharp to trying to tank up damage, but the carries are a little too low. Perfection trying to do something. Carbon's going to rejoin, though. Minky finds Perfection for the next turn. Sybil's going to come back in. Ulti onto Minky, though, taking out, but Sharp's dead oh. as well. Tally, though, jumped up by Nada. They need to run, Direwolves. They're in a very awkward spot. Oh, Claire's coming in. They're trying to find enough space for the ulti. Lantern, not enough, though. Legacy. Get control back over the Baron area. They might just do it. They're probably just going to do it. They don't have the Shen. He doesn't have a teleport or an ultimate to get there. But they've got the front line to ensure that they have enough health. And they know all of Direwolves need to recall. They overstayed their welcome to try and find a single kill. Sharp was in a horrendous position so far forward. Legacy get a free one. Yep, gold lead evens back out. Well, not quite. 
Title was still up about two and a half thousand gold, but Legacy get a nice chunk back after that Baron fight. And again, Dialves can certainly fight. They're an aggressive team. They play well when going forward. But Legacy have continued to play circles around Dialves all series long. And they're fighting in this game, but that might not be enough. Legacy are getting everything that they can. They are making nice trades out of what is not necessarily nice situations. But Dialves just seem to be going from strength to strength. They've got that Void Staff on Orianna. Something that we mentioned was the Holy Trinity of Orianna items completed. She is relevant from here on out. Orianna is going to do her job. The last Whisper done for King. Yeah, King as well gets his fourth item. So he's nice and strong. Sharp almost at three tank items as well. Legacy, just, they're playing around Minky very well here. Sharp now with his teleport might make that a little easier. But you can see just stalking through the bottom side jungle. Going to take another turret here. They've got the Baron buff. They know they have momentum. They've got complete vision control as well. They may even catch Sybil on rotation with a hook. But in saying that, at the very least, one tower is going to be this. Yep, that tower goes down. Seventh of the game. Just to remind you, there was still an open inhibitor in top lane. Oh, yeah. So Legacy pressuring structures so they can try and take, knowing they've got a free pass into the top if they need it. You almost forgot that that existed. Carbon's top. Yeah, Sharp's getting chased down. Carbon's ulted up here. Sharp, pretty tanky, but he might not be that tanky. They've got enough damage by the looks of things. They're chasing Claire, though. Not as pop that ulti, but they're going to look for... Oh, my God, Tally. Lucky to be alive there. Sharp's still fighting in the top half, but they're going to go back in. Dial's trying to force a 5v3. Sorry, 4v3. Oh, my God, the play. Sybil flayed out of Body Slam. Hooked up again. Sharp is going to lose by the looks of things. Tally might get takes out Sybil. The Direwolves in two different spots on the map look to lose their skirmishes. Sharp is still alive, by the way. Oh, yeah. And will live. <laughs> he manages to get out. That's always going to be nice. Direwolves, they've still got King. They've still got perfection with his ultimate. So if Legacy force their way into the inhibitor area, it does run the risk of walking over the top of an Orianna ball. So it's not necessarily the easiest objective for them to take, but it's the one they're going for. Yeah. Nada as well, looking for another pick, but he doesn't have his ulti. Claire's back now as well. Had to go back to base to heal. But managed to do so. Legacy still applying pressure with this Baron. Nice minding wave built up in the bottom side. Means that they're going to pressure this open inhibitor that we just talked about. Exactly right. They've got the numbers here. They've got the Baron minions to push it in. But they don't have mid pushing in their favor. The only one they have is bottom. So they have to go from here to the other side of the map if they can't make this work. Well, Gryl's going to try something. Might have to just fight here. It's too hard. I mentioned the Orianna ball. There's no way for the carries of Legacy to walk underneath the ball to hit the inhibitor. They can't take it. Well, bottom side is going to get cleared out by King. That'll buy them some time and space. 40 seconds to the Dragon. Now Dials repel Legacy from their base. But they had a nice looking gold lead. Maybe 10 minutes ago, Rusty. Uh, it's about 1,000 gold between the two teams now. All of a sudden, 35 minutes in. Lead looks I did not like much at all. Pretty much non-existent. One kill between the teams right now. Three dragons to one, which is nice. But two turrets in advantage of Legacy. The fact they're behind in gold is worrying. They're chasing Sybil. Perfection's trying for something here, but Nada might have been caught out again. Yeah. Teleport down for Sharp. Minky, not with his ultimate just yet. They'll jump on a carbon again. They want to kill him. They'll hook onto him. But they can't get to the carries. That's the tough part. Sybil taking too much oh. damage. Ulti onto three, though. And Dialos go off. King. Gets himself a double kill. Flying Jew running away from Sharp. But the Dives are peeing. They want the base. That's exactly what we talked about. Oriana always going to be relevant. Camp her all you want. But you hit her at 35 minutes. And one ultimate connects onto the important members. Claire and Tally are gone. They're going to be able to get this inhibitor. Maybe more, but it's unlikely. 25 seconds left on Legacy. They might go... Nope. No. They keep it safe. I think that's the right Dragon. call. Dragon up as well, also important. Deny the fourth dragon from Legacy. Ensure you get the second one yourself. You just got an inhibitor. You cannot be any happier in the position that you are right now. The blue buff's an added bonus with perfection. That's nice. Yeah, going to get himself another blue buff there. Oriana looking better and better as the game drags on. But King as well set up so nicely for the alley-oop there. And one shot, though, if you set it, Rust, you can turn a game. But there's the dragon as well. 3,000 gold up. Have to dodge these hooks as they exit. Like, you have to be careful. They might just fight. Look at King. He's he the tank. He does not care at all. He's going straight onto Carbon. Crits him. Claire trying to look for a line, but they're going to keep going back in. Carbon taking too much damage. Perfection. Cutting around the side. Nada's taking out Carbon. Claire's going to get locked up by Nada. 
He dies before Minky can make it back in, and King has been unleashed. Minky not able to have an impact. Tally. Yeah, caught now as well. Will go down to the crits, and that might be the end of the game. They've got enough time to end this game right now. Direwolves, they get a convincing victory again. It feels like everything is so even. Look at the goal difference at 36 minutes in the game. It's nowhere near enough to consider that a winning amount. But if they can end the game oh, right now... Minky trying to buy time. Has to buy a bit more. Getting altered by Nada. They're going to kill him. King is legendary now, 9-1-1. One, one. And they're going to try and end the game. Flying Jew doing what he can to buy time. But there's an ace completed for Diwolf. First Nexus starts for Second will fall now as well. And Carbon can't do anything but watch the Direwolves will claim a game and will force a game number four. Game four here between both of these teams. Direwolves, their team comp is what reigns supreme from them in the end. They get the result that they're looking for and that is fantastic work from this side. To be down 0-2 to two, and Legacy surging in that third game, to be able to turn that back around find a point of confidence and have a victory, you can see they're smiling and so they yep. should be. Yeah, a few more smiles. You see King in the back there sort of leans back in his chair and breathes out. Had a good game there on Sivir Claire. Does not look too happy after that game. He could taste the finals there. But I have to play at least one more game as we're back with Spawn. And we're waiting for Dios to show some signs of life. And we found them. <laughs> We certainly did. What a game coming out. And you know, it still did not look like really clean Direwolves play. But at least they're back to team fighting like the Direwolves we really know and love. Yeah, they were put on the back foot, of course. It was a rough start for them, but they found their strengths around the 30-minute point. You have to give a lot of credit to King, though. That guy bridged the gap for his entire team. Yeah, he certainly did. As a civil, like, as soon as he got to the three items, then he got four items. You could just see as the game was growing on, it was like he was growing as a player once again and there were some aggressive flashes maybe a little bit too aggressive <laughs> at times again but that's how king likes to play league of legends and it was nice to see the front line as well really supporting that because like you said you said it actually in the draft you just looked down that comp and it's like yep that's a dials comp get into the game maybe not playing like the dials but by the end they certainly were yeah, it certainly wasn't. You know, maybe one mistake. Finally, a lot of AP damage against a Maokai. They just could not get through Sharp. No, Sharp was massive there. And, of course, the turning point, at least in the start of that game for the Wolves, was that first Baron. Yeah, it certainly was. And we have a replay of it. And, you know, I really enjoyed watching this because... Actually, we don't have that replay, so uh, we'll get another one to you guys uh, in a second. But you, the thing about that team fight that really did it for me was everything had been going Legacy's way. They were able to bust the top part of the map. They looked like they were beating Direwolves around again, but then this was just like the final, like the penny dropped and they got the 5v5. Yeah, there was one period of time where Legacy, they went from top to bottom and they took literally everything they could along the way. But Direwolves, they just held on as long as they could. Sybil, you have to give a lot of credit to that guy. The explosive casks were phenomenal. Pretty much giving King kills on a silver platter, which allowed him to get the f kills he wanted. Yeah, exactly right. And, you know, we've talked about King. We've talked about Sybil. And perfection, he didn't look too comfortable on the Ariana. But he had one amazing team fight that we'll pull up for you guys. Because this shockwave, like, just honestly, as we roll it, I'm not even going to say anything. Just watch for the shockwave come through because he completely destroyed the entire team. Yeah, there's not much more you could say. The shockwave, you can see he holds onto it for as long as possible as well. The second he can get close enough, it'll be about now. And yeah, it just game over. Hits both carries, chunks out Minky out to half health. King, the guy that we talk about, like if you've only got a single AD carry threat, make sure it's a Sivir because of the AOE that comes through on top of it. And he just cleaned house after the Shockwave came Definitely. In. I like the adaption as well. They've actually got rid of the Cogmore. They put a Sivir there. They denied the Sivir from Taliwaka first and foremost. He loves playing Sivir. They put it onto King, who can now sit in that front line, try and play that basically melee AD carry that we know he loves to do and actually get the team going. Yeah, he certainly can. And, you know, that was the adaptation. We said, are they going to ban the Ezreal? Sure, they did. They had to give up banning the Sivir for it, and they just pick it away for themselves. Keep in mind, that was after perfection. Got horrendously camped in that game as <laughs> yeah. well. So after five minutes of, like, just brutality from Carbon and Co., Coming out there with a massive shock, it has to be good for your momentum as well. Yeah, it certainly does. And you could see he was looking for it. It actually impacted his play because he was holding abilities yeah. to try and get it in. And he had some bad ones, but that was a very good one. So you're right. The confidence would shoot up. And, you know, we have another replay to pull up for you guys. It's the Baron fight that happens. This is actually what we're talking about. And this is why I think that Legacy will still feel comfortable coming into this. Because this is Direwolves having absolutely no idea on the shot calling end if we're completely frank because when we roll it out you'll see Sybil wants to stay on Baron everyone else wants to try and fight people yep 
pretty much exactly what happened, you know. Sybil, he did keep the Baron aggroed at the very least, and Direwolves, a little bit of a messy decision because Sybil has sat in the pit and lost all of that health. Sharp finds himself being, I'm guessing, the one that said he wanted to fight. You can see how deep he actually is compared to the rest of his side. And you can see Perfection searching for a Shockwave, and that's what I'm talking about. Allows a Shen to walk into melee range. No flash there in Taunt. Only gets a one person with it. And from there, you know, Void Rust comes in. Carbon's back. He's full health. No one has any mana. Diewolves have to scatter, and that's just really smart play out of Legacy. They recognize if they keep them there for 20, 30 seconds until their shot call is back, they can win that team fight. And this was a period of time as well where we were looking at the Direwolves, and we were even saying it during the game, they probably should have backed up. They didn't have the health bars to sustain a Baron, knowing that the Rek'Sai had the ultimate available, but they continued it through, and you can see how that backfires. Yeah, so I know, like, moving into game four, and, like, what you have to look at is, if this gets to 5v5, which is why I want a perfection on Vladimir so much, to force that play style yeah. out of the Direwolves, you feel the Direwolves in team fights can have a shot, but if Legacy can continue to dictate early game, drag them around the map the way that Legacy is doing, they just really look like they're on the same page right now. Yeah, they do indeed. But they are going to pop to a break. We'll see. Can Legacy keep running around and take the series soon? Are the Dialogues going to force a fifth game? Don't go too far. We'll find out soon. <laughs>